years ago, we will recall, also on July 1st, was the handover of Hong Kong to China. We remember back then that the agreement that was signed, the Sino agreement that was signed between China, the UK, and the people of Hong Kong, and indeed with the rest of the world, what that one country, two system agreement meant, and how important it was that we must we must honor that commitment. And little did I know that 23 years later, that we will stand here to protest against a national security law that the Chinese government brought in and effectively, in my view, ending the promise of one country, two system. And it is absolutely devastating to see this happen. That law, ironically has six parts to it with 66 articles now i'm not a religious person but there's something to be said about this the symbolism of 666 those who have a religious background i think will understand the symbol of that and importantly what does this law really mean what are the implications of this law and you know, before the law was passed, people actually didn't know what the law contained. And even as it stands now, we don't know what is constituted as national security. What is a breach of national security with the exception of some vague language contained within it? And the reality is this, a protest like this, where we gather to express our points of view, where we gather to stand to criticize a government's point of view. If this were to happen in Hong Kong, and we know this is happening in Hong Kong, and already some 400 people have been arrested, holding a sign that might be deemed to be critical of the government could land you in jail. Just take that for a minute and process that and understand the implication of that and what it means. And that law applies not just to Chinese nationals. I, as a Canadian, if I travel back to Hong Kong, I may well be arbitrarily detained. I may well end up in jail. That is a real possibility under this new law that China just brought in. We were just mentioning and wanting to honor the two Michaels, to remember them, to recognize them, to demand their freedom. And you know what? With the passage of this law, we are all potential Michaels. Let's just be clear about that and understand what this means. And that's why this rally is so very important. That's why across the globe, across countries, across jurisdictions, parliamentarians, leaders have come together to sign a petition to condemn this action. As it stands right now, over 900 elected officials across the globe have signed onto a petition to condemn this law. And so, my friends, I cannot tell you how important it is for Canada to stand together with the international community to fight against this law and to say and to send a clear signal to China that this is not acceptable. It is not acceptable to violate international laws. It is not acceptable to go through this process to which they had signed on to and then only to renege on it. It is not acceptable for the people of Hong Kong to have their rights to be stripped from them. Rights that was promised to them back in 1997 on this day with the handover. It is not right for children and for women and for journalists, for young people to be jailed for expressing what's in their heart and demanding what we enjoy here in Canada, and that is freedoms and democracy. So I am here to stand with Hong Kong, absolutely. I am here to stand with you, to demand our Canadian government to take action. And I am here to stand 
with the international community that we must link hands arm in arm to fight against this because the implication of this will touch every single one of us. And so I call on the Canadian government to recognize this in their own advisory that today they put up in their own travel advisory, an advisory to Canadians who might be traveling back to Hong Kong to warn them that they might be subject to arbitrary detention. If the government has put that up in their travel advisory, then they must understand the seriousness of that. And we must have a suite of action to address this issue. And first and foremost, I would also want our Canadian government to make a clear expression in support of the people in Hong Kong and to extend a hand to those who will face political persecution that Canada is a country that will support those who face political persecution. And we need to have measures in place to support them. The U.S., not that I agree with everything the United States has done, mind you, but the U.S. has brought in aggressive measures or in the process of bringing in aggressive measures. The U.K. has brought in and in the process of bringing in aggressive measures in that regard. And Canada needs to step up to the plate. And the 300,000 Canadians that are in Hong Kong right now, they too are at risk. So we must stand united to fight this battle. And this is not a battle for the people of Hong Kong alone. It is for all of us. It is for democracy and it is for humanity. Thank you all so very much for allowing me to join with you today. Thank you to all the organizers for bringing us together. This is the beginning and not the end of what we need to stand together to fight for. Thank you all so much.